By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have a match of 7 point singleton for you. Yeah, we haven't done any 7 point singleton for a long time, but that's not because I don't like the format. I think it's a great format because singleton just offers so much variety and I always look forward to these matches when I'm able to do them. And in today's match, we actually have a final. This is the final of their 28th monthly tournament and it is between a bus aka Beastie Bus, also a patron of the show. He is playing a sweet mono black list and he's taking on Eric, also a patron of the show, and he is playing a blue red, you could say counterburn in singleton. And I mean, these lists are really sweet. Now, before I dive into the lists, I would first uh, like to pay some attention to their points list because it is singleton, meaning you can only play with one of each card except for the basic lands. Um, and it also means that you only have seven points to spend on cards with points on them. So here you can see the points list and probably the first thing that you notice as you know, if, if you don't play singleton often is wow, fireball and disintegrate are so high up in the point stats. Now I can tell you from personal experience that is correct because you know, red has been dominant in a seven point singleton for a long time in singleton i should say because of all that firepower so i think it's really good that they're heavily pointed and uh, i believe today also itic is playing with is he playing with both cards let me quickly have a look actually he is not so that's interesting and there's still a lot of burn left in his deck so i mean that kind of shows the power of red in singleton because it can be pretty consistent with the burn plan if you don't add any points list like this one attached to it anyway uh these are the points now if you want to know more about this community check out the description below because there is a link to their facebook page you can join it for free it's a very open and relaxed community and you can also play in these events for free they uh, organize it every month just like for example x points does so it's really nice to have these initiatives right where you can play magic if you want to these are really the places uh, the places to go first i would say anyway this is the uh, seven point singleton's points list i am now going to start with the deck decks i've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks but before i do i'd first like to point out that as always you can also choose to first go to the games check out the deck decks later i know some people prefer to do that the easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps one of the timestamps reads mtg games Click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And here I'm going to continue with the deck decks and I'm gonna start with the deck of Boss. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Boss. So it is mono black and I mean, look at it. Let's just start with the creatures there on the right side. I'm seeing a lot of really cool creatures. The first card I notice is the Frozen Shade there in the corner. I love Frozen Shade. One black and two for an 01 creature and for one black you can give it plus one plus one. Not really good, but I think in singleton, in a mono black deck, it could be good. So I'm curious to see how that card will perform. Talking about a mono black a creature card, of course, there is Nightmare, really the uh, the poster boy together, I guess, with Juzam Jin for black or the poster horse, I should say. So um, Nightmare is a flying creature with asterisk, asterisk for power and toughness, and the power and toughness equals the amount of swamps you control, and it is six to cast. So with this deck, probably when you cast it at turn six, you have a six, six flying creature. I mean, that is bigger than a Mahamoti Jin, you know, that is serious business then when we're looking at the rest of the creatures i notice a guardian beast in here so i see guardian beast together with chaos orb that means you can have an infinite orb flip combo with this deck that is really scary i mean that is something you don't want to run into and remember boss is playing of course with a demonic tutor so that kind of ups the chances of him actually assembling these two pieces on the board that is really scary Talking about combos like this, we also see Taunus's Coffin and Triskelion. That's a really neat way of getting extra counters on your trike and kind of dominate the board that way. That is that is really good. Then when we look at the artifacts in the deck, we of course see a Nevenerals Disc. I think Nevenerals Disc, when you're playing Mono Black, it is essential because certain cards you cannot get rid of. So you really need your Nevenerals Disc and your Chaos Orb in a deck like this. We also see a beautiful altered Icy Manipulator. I love that with that hand and that wizard's kind of cape is that his cape or something but i like it it's, it's a really cool altar uh we also see a him to turek there on the top talking about the sorceries i think drain life in this deck is quite important because there's not a lot of ways of getting life in black but there's a lot of ways of losing life right you've got your pestilence 
you've got your Goombach witches, you've got your greed, all these things take life from you. So, you know, you need a way to gain some life as well. So luckily, there is that, uh, that drain life that can kind of do that. It's only one card though. So I think that's also a concern is maybe a big word, but that could be a weakness of this deck that you start hurting yourself so much that you don't really, you know, have enough left anymore and are very vulnerable to, for example, the burn of your opponent. Remember, the opponent of Bust today is playing red. So there's probably some burn in his deck. Um, talking about, you know, hurting yourself, Pestilence, I think is a really good card here. Two black and two, an enchantment. Pay one black, deals one damage to each creature and each player. And at the end of the turn, if there are no creatures anymore on board, then it sacrifices uh, itself. So then it goes out of the game, basically. Um, this card can be really deci decisive, especially when you're ahead on life. You know, you can start dealing damage every single turn, trying to keep your creature alive. And at the same time, getting closer and closer to killing your opponent. So again, it's really important with that scenario that you stay ahead on life, of course, or else you, you end up killing yourself. And, you know, you don't want to do that. I think Underworld Dreams, the card right next to Pestilence, is great to kind of help you, you know, in that department. Underworld Dreams, of course, three black to cast. That simply says every time your opponent draws a card, he takes a damage. So that's really great. I also like the synergy between Pestilence and Animate Dead. Because if you have Pestilence on board, you can use it to kill the biggest, baddest creature of your opponent. Maybe even wipe the entire board that way. And then use your Animate Dead to choose the strongest creature that you've just killed. Get it back on your side of the battlefield. And then your Pestilence isn't destroyed because there's a creature on board. And then you pass the turn. So that's another really cool thing that you can do with, with Pestilence and Animate Dead. Maybe we're going to see it this game. Who knows? Talking about the game, let's take a look at the opponent of Boss. And that's Eric. Let's take a look at his deck. And here we see the list of Eric Ostman. So I've kind of called it Counter Burn because it's blue and red. But it's not your typical Counter Burn deck, obviously, because of the fact we're playing Singleton. And because of the fact that we've got that point list. Keep that in the back of your mind because we're not seeing Fireball and we're not seeing Disintegrate because these cards are so heavily uh, pointed, they're so heavily taxed. And the interesting thing is that you then see players make other decisions and you see cards you normally don't see that often. One of the cards I'm really looking forward to see in action is Immolation. Immolation is an enchant creature from Legends for just one red that gives target creature plus two, minus two. And what I like about these cards is that you can use them both ways. They're flexible. You can use them to kill a creature of your opponent or make the creature weak enough maybe for a bolt or a chain lightning, but you can also use them to buff your own creatures and attack with them. For example, your Rock of Kariches, you can turn it into a 5-1 flyer. You know, if your opponent doesn't have any blockers or removal, that's five damage, you know, that, that that's huge. So I'm, I'm liking that, you know, I'm like that you get space for other cards. Um, when we're looking at this list, I'm just seeing a lot of powerful cards. It's, it's definitely, not a quick deck. It's going to take longer, I think. Maybe it's it's even a bit slower than the mono black deck. So he's going to have to try to use his counter magic to kind of control the board to stay alive long enough to start playing out his fatties like the Sheevan Dragon, um, you know, to get his time elemental online. I mean, that card can be so annoying. And I say that out of experience, once it's online, it's so hard to play against. You really need to remove that card. Um, also is playing with Amaa Moti Jin, the beautiful Vesuvan Doubleganger. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of creatures that I really like. And of course, that beautifully altered Tim there with that uh, with that hat on that's uh, enjoying the sunshine. That's really, really cool. And then we also have some nasty cards in here. The blue a Mind Twist Amnesia. Wow. I mean, if you can pull that off, that's three blue and three to cast for a sorcery. And target player reveals their hand and discards all non-land cards. Love the art by Mark Poole on this one, like the brain that's open. He forgot everything that's clear. So it's a very brutal way of uh, discarding someone's hand. And remember, at least you get to keep the lance. So it's not that bad. And remember, it is six mana. So it's very late in the game. But I, I, I can see... I can see the game taking longer, you know, with the with the decks of, of both of these players. I think it's going to be a very interesting match, also because it looks like it's going to be quite creature heavy. I mean, it could be wrong, but just looking uh, looking at both decks, they both have beautiful creatures that you just want to cast and want to see in action, like classic battles, like Shivan Dragon versus Nightmare. I mean, who doesn't love that? Like uh, Royal Assassin, although I think Royal Assassin is going to have quite a tough time against um, against all the removal you're in the deck. Although, there's not that much removal. You've got Falling Star, you've got Chain Lightning, you've got Lightning Bolt, you've got Psionic Blast, uh, you've got Fisher, you know, which is which is quite good, actually, Fisher. I like that card. It's instant, uh, two red and three. I think Control Magic could be really good in this matchup because, of course, Boss is playing Mono Black, so he doesn't have a lot of answers 
two enchantments, so that could be really good. But I mean, he doesn't have Earthquake, he doesn't have Pyrotechnics, um, you know, he doesn't have Firebolt, you know, we discussed that before. So, Orcish Artillery could be good, I think, in this match. Also, if you think that Boss has quite a lot of two toughness creatures, so I can see that card being being very strong here in this, uh, in this matchup. I think looking at these cards and having very little knowledge of the format, because I don't play it that often and I don't make videos about it that often, I would say Eric, for me, is a favorite, 60-40. But again, again, I'm, I'm saying this in, in very modestly because I hardly have any knowledge of, uh, of this format. It's been a while since uh, since I made videos and, and, and I've played 7 Point Singleton a few times, but not that often. Anyway, we are ready to go to the 7 Point Singleton Finals number 28. Let the games begin. Okay, game number one of the 7 Point Singleton Final between Eric and Bus. So Eric is playing blue-red, kind of counter-burn, kind of not. And he's playing against Bus, who's on mono black. He's on a play here, starting with a Mishra's Factory and a pass turn. There's a mountain from Eric and also a pass. Let's see what we're gonna get. There is a swamp, some quick action here. There's an AO pile, the artifact from Fallen Empires. One tap and sack, deal two damage to any target. It's like a mini lightning bolt and it gives access to direct damage for all colors, which is quite nice for the balance of the game, I guess. Ooh, look at that. There we've got one of those discard thralls, a mind step thrall, but a quick lightning bolt. So it's going to the graveyard. So that's pretty good for Eric because remember this mind step throw when it deals damage you can choose uh, to sacrifice it then it doesn't take any damage but it uh, forces your opponent to discard three cards from their hand so that's uh, pretty heavy. Here we see an orcish artillery by the way being played out by Eric. This is a big deal. The artillery is really good. It's a 1-3 tap to deal two damage to any target and you take three damage but I think that two damage it, it's huge. You know if you look at the list of boss he's got a lot of two toughness creatures. This could really be difficult for him. In the tank here, tapping four. Oh, Juzam Jin! What a powerhouse! Five, five. Turn number four. This is great for Boss. I mean, this is something. If Eric now has, for example, a control magic, that would be huge. But remember, it is Singleton, so it, there's a slim chance. And it looks like he doesn't have one, or else he would have played it out. So Boss here, of course, taking a damage for the Juzam, dropping to 19. But now he can attack with his five, five. Oh man, Juzam on the board. And now it's got five lands as well. I mean, he's got a lot of bigger creatures in his deck as well. Sengir Vampire is in there. That could be one of the uh, five drop options for him. Really into tank. I wonder what he's thinking about. Tapping the factory. Tapping four lands in total. What are we going to see for four? There's an Icy Manipulator. I mean, a lot of good cards here being played out by Boss. Looks like he's going to tap the artillery. He's going to attack. The reason that he does that is maybe he thinks, what if Eric, for example, has some kind of pump spell for the artillery? Bloodlust, for example. There we see a phantom monster, 3-3 three, three flyer. It's got really cool flavor text, by the way. By, I believe, Edgar Allan Poe. I love that about the old school cards that they uh, reference these big authors. Let's see what Bus can do. Of course, they uh, took another damage from the Juzam, so he's on 18. If he attacks, Eric, Eric can consider blocking with the Phantom, then dealing the extra points of damage with the Artillery. Ooh, tapping five here. There's a Drain Life, so Drain Life for three probably, exactly on the Phantom. And it's so nice about Drain Life, it deals damage and it gives you life, so he goes back up to 21, attacking with the Juzam. Eric now on 10, I mean, he's really getting in trouble. It's not looking good for him here. The Juzam is doing so much work. Tapping six. Oh, Shivan hitting the board. But remember, Bus can, of course, tap to Shivan and continue attacking. 
Dropping to 20, I wonder if he's going to do that, because if he does that, it does mean that Eric can really attack for big time next turn with Dishiven. I mean, one of the things he could do here is just pass and then on end step, tap to Shivan or, or, or before combat, tap to Shivan next turn, then attack. He's being aggressive here, tapping down to Shivan. Probably going to go into the red zone. There he goes, Juzem in the red zone. Are we going to see a chump? Eric doesn't want to. Thinking about it. Is he going to block or not? I mean, this is a tough situation. He is going to block. Are we going to see a follow-up play by Boss in the second main? And now, of course, Boss can now uh, use the factory again next turn to also attack with the factory. Tapping four. What are we going to see? Ooh, there's a rocket launcher. So Rocket Launcher Artifact from Antiquities, you cannot use it to turn it comes into play, but after that you can pay two and deal one damage to any target. You can do that as often as you want, but at the end, at the beginning of your next end step, the Rocket Launcher is destroyed. There we see a quick shatter though on the IC. I mean, this is tough for Eric, you know? Because yes, it's good to have the shatter on the IC, but you still have to deal with and the Rocket Launcher and the AO Pile and the Juzam. I think if you're boss, you're probably going to swing in next turn with the Juzam. Idik, of course, uh, still in the tank. You're deciding not to attack, passing the turn. So boss dropping to 19. What boss can also do, but he just needs one more mana to do that, is he could use and the Rocket Launcher and the AO Pile to destroy the Shivan Dragon, but then he needs one more mana. Because remember, you need to invest two mana for your Rocket Launcher per damage. So if you have six lands, you can deal three points of damage. If you then have one mana left to sack the AO pile, that can make five, destroying the dragon. Another good line here could be just to attack with the Juzam, trading it for the dragon. You could even consider also attacking with the factory. Say, okay, if you're going to block the factory, kill the factory, then I'm going to deal five to you, put you on five, and probably going to kill you with the rocket launcher and the AO pile. The turn after, of course, because you don't have enough mana to do that all in the same time. But you would put Eric in a, in a difficult position. He only has one card in hand. Already played out his Lightning Bolt. Already played out his Shatter as well. That's also a good card against the uh, Factory, for example. Two cards in hand for Boss. A really exciting first game. So Boss still on 19, Eric on 10. I so want to know what they have in hand. I really wonder. Because he's thinking about doing something. He probably just doesn't have enough mana to do everything that he wants to do. I wonder if he's also considering animating the factory, attacking with the factory as well. Looks like he's going to play something out, tapping three. Oh, this is good. There's a Sorcerer's Queen. And there's a maze. Okay, then there's no need to attack, of course. You can just wait. Next turn, you can use your Sorcerer's Queen to make the Shivan into an O2. So there's no need now. To attack. I mean, you could still trade. It's not bad, but another line of play here is animate the factory, attack with the factory and the, and the Juzam, and then whatever creature he blocks, you take it out of combat with the mace. But then, of course, the next turn, you'll probably take a lot of damage from the Sheevan. And that's it. Eric just finding Lance, saying, you've got this. And agreed, they're on the top for bus. So game number one is going to bus, and both players are going to shuffle up, and we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. Eric, of course, on the play after losing that first game. Bussy is still picking up some cards. Playing the Swamp, passing the turn. There's a Plateau. Ooh, is there some white in the deck as well? And there is a Black Knight by Boss. 2-2, two, two, first strike, protection from white. There's a Strip Mine, tapping three. There's a Granite Gargoyle, 2-2 two, two Flyer. Pay one, red, give it plus O, plus one. 
So it doesn't have any red mana at the moment, of course. So boss kind of has a free attack here. Drawing a card for turn. Probably going to turn that knight sideways. Love the flavor text of the black knight, by the way. Pretty epic. He doesn't need a reason to fight. Attacking here. <laughs> there he goes. Eric on 18. Tapping three. What are we going to see? Ooh, there's an hypnotic specter. Kind of annoying here for Edic. That means he needs to keep the gargoyle on blocking duty. He's going to tap three. Oh, there's a Falling Star. Yeah, this is pretty big. This is pretty cool. So Falling Star, you got to flip it just like a Chaos Orb, but everything it hits takes three points of damage. You can destroy two creatures here with one Falling Star. Here we go. Yep, it's a hit. Oh, man. If you're really good at flipping the star, I believe you can, you can hit five targets, which is pretty insane. And remember, it also taps the creature. So even if, if you don't kill the creature with the star, it's still tapped. So you can do fun stuff with that as well With when you have a royal or, you know, play with Meek Stone. There are a lot of fun things you can do with the Falling Star. There we see an Urborg. Tapping three. There's an Underworld Dreams. Putting some pressure on the life total. So Eric now taking a damage every time he draws a card. That's never great when you play with blue when you, when you face an Underworld Dreams. I can uh, tell from experience. Attacking for two here. Boss dropping to 16. But things are looking good for Eric so far. Unfortunately, he's not finding any pressure. Hopefully for him, he's got some counter magic in hand. And now if you're a boss, you got to think, am I going to play something out? Probably going to run into counter magic. And then what am I going to play out? But of course, you do want to do something because there's the 2-2 on the board. So you uh, take uh, twice as much damage every turn than Eric is. Going to tap two black. Going to tap four in total. Let's see what he has. There's a Pestilence. That's pretty good. No counter magic from Eric, it seems. Looks like boss is thinking about something. Okay, playing a land for turn, passing the turn. So one more damage here for Eric. going to drop to 16 as well. Oh, Ancestral Recall. So it's still good, you know, three cards, but you do take three damage for it because of that Underworld Dreams. I mean, which is still a great deal, but, but th this is the thing that Underworld Dreams does. You think, oh, I can take a damage, I can take a damage. And before you know it, you're so low, you, you cannot take anything anymore and you're kind of stuck. So it is dangerous. I mean, obviously, I also would have played Ancestral Recall in, at, at this stage in the, in the match. Don't get me wrong, but this is just what, what Underworld Dreams does to you. Anyway, an attack here by Eric, uh, putting Bus here on 14. And Boss not using that one Pestilence damage he had opened. to just ping. I probably would have done that. And I wonder if Boss is going to try to kill the uh, Granite Gargoyle. I mean, he can wait, right? He can just pass and wait. Remember, Eric is two mountains, I believe, right? He's got the Volcanic Island and the Plateau, so he can make the Gargoyle into a 2-4. Also has a desert now that can deal one damage to an attacking creature. I mean, if you're a boss, you really just want to draw into a big flyer, like a Sengir Vampire, something like that. A Nightmare would be even better. He's got six mana. But again, Eric, of course, having all that blue open and a, I believe a pretty full hand, like four cards or something in hand there. So it is pretty risky. But I think if you're playing singleton, it's probably better to just bait out the counter, counter spells, right? And be like, okay, you've got a counter spell, whatever. It's just, it's not that many. Tapping four, tapping six. Are we going to see, oh, the nightmare. I love it. So nightmare has power and toughness equal to the amount of swamps you have. So he's got four in total. So it's a four, four. It's just, it's just beautiful to see these creatures. I love it. 
Eric taking a damage. And I think it's pretty clear now that Eric doesn't have any counter magic in hand. Perhaps a spell blast that could be. And now Eric doesn't, doesn't have a good attack anymore. Of course, he does have the strip mine. Could consider stripping a swamp because then he would make the uh, nightmare into a 3 3. It looks like that's exactly what he does here. He's going to strip a swamp. If he has a chain lightning or a bolt, he can now kill the nightmare. Who changing his mind, it seems. Tapping three instead. Psionic Blast. Okay. I mean, both are options. Going to take two from his own blast. Going to go down to ten. But now he has an opening to attack. There he goes. Also putting a boss here on ten. Of course, boss still has that pestilence. Could consider using the pestilence now. The problem is... That the factory, of course, is not a creature at the moment. So it's probably better for him to just wait. Going to go through the hand. Going through the motions. I mean, you really don't want to play out like a smaller creature because of that pestilence. What you could do if you have a creature in hand is first use the Pestilence to kill the, uh, the Gargoyle and after that cast the, um, cast the creature because then the Pestilence isn't destroyed. But you can also just wait and say, you know what, Eric, if, if you're going to animate the factory, fine, but then I'm just going to wipe the board. They're both on 10, which makes it pretty interesting. Of course, you do know you're playing against a player with red, so that means direct damage. So how low do you want to go with your own Pestilence? What would be re really good here is, again, one of those drain lives to kind of drain the Gargoyle, because then you gain some life as well. Looks like he's really in the tank here. Thinking about it, he's gonna pay two. There's a Demonic Tutor, okay. Demonic Tutor, I think this is a good time to play the Tutor because of course Eric only has that one plateau untapped so you don't have to worry about counter magic. And Demonic Tutor is one of those cards that's easy to counter with, for example, Spell Blast. But now Eric doesn't have the mana open, so you have that possibility. The question now is, what are you going to tutor for? I mean, you've got four mana open. What can you really do with four mana? It looks like he's made his choice. Shuffling up. And he's not passing the turn yet, it seems. Does that mean that he has a card that he wants to play out straight away? I mean, that would make me quite curious. What could it be? Putting it in hand. Playing a land for turn. It's a tap land from Fallen Empire. It comes to play tapped. You can untap, tap it for a black or tap and sack it for two black. I find the blue one quite handy because of that. Because then if you want to have counter magic up, you only have to keep that one blue land untapped. Anyway, let's look at what Eric can do. Going to go to nine, of course, because of that Underworld Dreams. I mean, it's doing so much work. It's just a constant flow of damage. And there he goes into the red zone, not animating the factory. So that's a good decision. And now this is difficult for boss. I mean, are you going to try to kill it? 
I mean, Eric has three mountains, so he can actually save it. He doesn't have enough. He is going to use two, though. Look at that. So that's two damage to everything. That would mean Eric's going to go down to seven. Bus would go down to eight. Changing his mind, though. He's just going to take the damage. Going to drop to eight. Could also consider doing it on end step. Forcing Eric to kind of, you know, tap some extra mountains. Now we're in the second main, of course, of Eric. Does he have something useful here to play out? Tap the volcanic. Tap the mountain. Chaos Orb. What is he going to orb on? Does he want to use the orb straight away? Maybe on, on the end step of bus on the Underworld Dreams could be an option. Pestilence could be an option. There's a lot of good stuff to choose from. Well, actually, only those two things, but it's, it's difficult. I would be tempted to destroy the Underworld dream, Dreams because you're ahead of, on, on life, and you don't have to do that now, of course. You can just wait. But if you want to destroy the, the Pestilence, I would do it right now because he's kind of limited in the amount of uh, swamps that he can pump into the Pestilence in response of the activation. Now remember, when you activate Chaos Orb, your opponent has to respond to that without knowing the target, which makes it quite interesting. So it looks like Eric is, is here using the Pestilence for two. I'm sorry, a boss is using the Pestilence for two. So that would mean both players would lose two life, and Eric would probably have to tap a mountain to keep the Gargoyle alive as well if he wants to. You can also choose not to, because then the Pestilence is, is, is destroyed. Exactly, chooses the latter. So Gargoyle dies, meaning Pestilence will go away as well. Six life for Boss, seven life for Eric. And now he's gonna flip. And you can see that Boss is really in the tank there, moving around in his chair, thinking about what he wants to do. Gonna use the Pestilence one more time. Dropping to five. This is quite an exciting game number two. There's the flip. Probably gonna flip on the Dreams. I wonder if it's a hit. Probably not, because there it wasn't a full rotation. It needs to rotate fully. Man, Bus is lucky there. That it's not a hit. There's a strip. That is very unfortunate here for Eric. I think if it was a hit, he was really on the way of winning it. He's still in a good position though. There's a city in a bottle. So that removes the desert. And I mean, Boss now just needs a blocker. If he's got a blocker for the, for the factory, he can just sit back and let the Underworld Dreams do some work. He's got five lands now. Tapping four. What do we have there? Oh, this is the Bok Wreath. Okay, so a 3-3 three, three Swamp Walker. That's actually great. That's a great blocker for the factory. That's exactly what the doctor ordered. Or not. There's a control magic. Oh, ho, ho, that is devastating. Now he can swing in for two. And next turn he can take the win. Remember, the Reef has Swamp Walk. So it's, it's extra painful here for Boss. I mean, control magic is so good. You know, especially in Singleton. Especially when you play against a Mono Black deck. You know, what are you going to do as a Mono Black player? Needs, for example, a Chaos Orb. This is really tough. He is going to tap three. There's a Mind Step throw. I mean, if, if Eric wouldn't have had the Control Magic, he was in a great position. But hey, that's not the case. Now we can win the game, I think. Going to tap... Ooh, going to tap six. To take care of the hand here of Boss. Gonna lose the greed. Oh, there was a drain life in hand. That was huge. I'm a little bit surprised that he didn't use the drain life, by the way, to drain the uh, the Bok Reef. Didn't he have enough mana for that? Probably not. Not quite sure. I think he had four, so he didn't have enough. Anyway, even without uh, the Amnesia, Eric would still have won just on the Wreath alone because uh, Bus was on three, of course. He could have just attacked. Remember, the Wreath has Swamp Walk. 
But uh, wow, what an exciting game number two. I also enjoyed game game one. So we're up for, for something here in game number three. I'm really looking forward to it. Anyway, we're going to let these players shuffle up and we will catch back up with them in the deciding game number three. Game number three, here we go. So I believe it's Boss on the play here. Ooh, a mulligan. Putting the card on the bottom. Both players taking a mulligan. Okay, so both starting on six. Whoa, double. Okay, wow. The final match are starting on five. That is tough, especially considering you're playing mono black. You don't have the, uh, the card draw that blue has. Does play with the greed. So that's something. Starting with the factory. Edic here starting with the island. The deciding game here, whoever wins this is going to crown himself the champion of 7 point singleton tourney 28. Eric dropping here to 18 because of the factory and passing. So there's some early pressure by boss strip mining here, probably volcanic exactly and going to swing in I assume here again with two. Are we going to see an unsummon? No, we're not. 16. I always love to unsummon Mishra's factory by the way, it's just great. Because your opponent loses a creature and gets behind on land. It's a really nice tempo play. There is another swamp here. So two swamps and a factory. Just a pass. Doesn't want to run into a bolt or a shatter. Eric here. Ooh, finding a time elemental. That could be difficult to play against. Time elemental, two blue and uh, two and tap. And you can return anything you wish. Target permanent to its owner's hand. Cannot target creatures if they are enchanted, by the way, which is pretty funny. So three lands, four lands now for bus. I mean, if you're bus, you really want to probably do something against the time elemental. Does, of course, now have a free swing with the factory. But it's so annoying to play against like an active time elemental. So in the tank, you're probably between or casting something or attacking, tapping four. Okay, there's a Nevenerals disc. Interesting. So if Eric can now find a land, he can use the time elemental exactly to send back the disc. <laughs> so you could get this game of ping pong here where Bus continues to play it out for four and Ida continues to send it back for four. There's a maze. Oh, this is funny. Wonder what Eric's going to do. He is going to send it back again. Oh, that is so funny. It's not too bad for Boss, you know, because he can, he can just play out a land, play it out again, force Eric to do the same, kind of get ahead on lands that way, I guess. There's an Aeopile. Using Aeopile, destroying the uh, Time Elemental. Yeah, Aeopile is a great answer to these kind of threats. And I find Aeopile a very interesting card because it gives di uh, act direct damage possibilities to, uh, to other colors except for, for red. So that's quite nice. Of course, blue has Psionic Blast and you know green is Hurricane and stuff, but still. You just have that extra possibility with the Aeopile. And Edek just doing nothing actually since he cast a Time Elemental. So probably is stuck with a lot of 5 drops in hand or counter magic. Passing the turn, boss tapping four. Okay, there's a greed. Okay, which is quite nice. Remember, he started with just five in hand. Counterspell, though. At the moment you see Eric tapping the two blue, you know what's going to happen. And now he's tapping four. Rock of Courage. Just remember, boss does have the maze. So he doesn't have to worry too much about the rock yet. Doesn't mean he can no longer attack with his own factory. Oh, there's the Juzam again. Juzam's back, baby. Kind of gave the victory to Boss in game one. And now it's back to do business. Juzam versus the Rock. Ooh, Control Magic. That is painful. Oh, man. Control Magic, such a good card. Such a good card. It's been so important in game two. And now in game three, Eric finding it again. So good for him here. Oh, this is so tough for Boss. Of course, he does have the maze, but then he would still take three a turn from the rock. Difficult for him. What to do? Really in the tank, which is understandable. Remember, this is game number three. The winner will crown himself the champion of seven point singleton 28. 
Tapping four. There's the Nevenerals Disc again. Of course, he still had that in hand. That is actually a good card at this moment. It'll destroy the creatures on the side of Eric. Oh, that's an eight. Oh, that is... I can feel that here. I can feel it in my guts that detonates. I can feel the shrapnel. This is really tough. Boss here dropping to 13. I mean... Is this a decider? This this detonate? Tapping three. Okay, there's a royal. There are some options again. Now, if Eric doesn't have any direct damage, maybe the royal can do something. Orcish Artillery. Oh, man. Every time when Bus finds an answer, Eric, Eric comes up with a solution. In this case, the Orcish Artillery. So what happens if Eric uses the uh, Artillery, Bus uses the Royal, and they both die? And of course, if you're Bus, you're not happy with that exchange because that means that Eric can attack again with his creatures. I mean, if... If Bus can find a flyer that's big enough, you know, he can just block the rock, send back the Juzam, and he's fine. So he's got some options. Oh man, this is it's this is such a nice match so far. I'm really, really enjoying it. Sometimes with these finals, it can get kind of one-sided. One person just, you know, draws the nuts or the other person doesn't draw lands or anything. But this is really a nice balanced matchup between two completely different decks. It's really nice to see. And Bossy really in the tank. Tapping. I believe he's got four, right? Tapping four. There's the Pestilence. Okay. So Pestilence could kill the rock. Which is what you want. Both players on 13, by the way. Of course, uh, Eric still taking damage from the Juzam. There's the attack. There's the Royal. So they're switching. Does mean 3 damage for Eric. Oh, actually, the Royal cannot respond. Okay, I thought that worked differently, but I guess I'm wrong. Sending back the Juzam. Still, it doesn't matter that much for Eric because, you know, he can use the Pestilence. But, for Bus, I mean, but what's Eric going to do here? Tapping lots of mana. What are we going to see? Oh, there's a Chief. Oh, 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 oh. oh, man. Bus facing a Chief and Dragon and a Juzam Jin. I mean, that is rough. So what he can do now is use Pestilence for three. Kill the Artillery. Kill the Rock. Right? But then he still has to deal with two 5-5s five coming his way. And he only has one maze. Does still have 10. So I do think he's got the, the potential of surviving at least one more round. Probably going to use the Pestilence in combat of Eric. Because of that Mishra's Factory as well on the side of Eric. But uh, yeah, this is difficult. Tapping two black. Urk Raiders. Okay, the Urk Raiders. Does that matter? Does it? I'm not sure if I would have played that out, to be honest. Because now you don't have enough mana anymore to, to pump the three into the Pestilence. You do have a blocker, of course, for the, um, for the factory. I think I wouldn't have played out the Urk Raiders, but I'm not quite sure what the thinking is here of Boss. I mean, you can also use the Urk Raiders, of course, to put it in front of the... Uh, the Juzam. So it's a nice jump blocker. That's also an option. You could even double block. Ooh, look at this. Animating. I think he's going to go into the red zone with everything except for the Orcish Artillery. Is this going to be the deciding attack here in the finals of 7 Point Singleton? Bus, understandably, really in the tank. Could animate the factory. Consider double blocking. But of course, Eric can respond. There's the Shatter. So losing the factory probably has to chump on the Juzam exactly. Then he still takes 10 damage, sending back to Sheevan. Probably going to take 5 damage, going to drop to 5. 
There's a bolt. Oh, and then he ends it. Bolt orcish artillery that seals the deal. Oh, oh, man. What an exciting, exciting final. I really, really enjoyed it. Thank you, Eric and Boss, for sharing this uh, match with me. And, uh, of course, a big congratulations to Eric winning it here with his blue red deck. And what I really like about this is because you have that, that points list, you know, this is not decided by a fireball or a disintegrate because they're simply pointed so heavily. So it means you have more space for other cards and you get these very interesting combat situations, which I really love. They're really exciting to look at and also to commentate on. And actually, as a magic player, I also love these these combat scenarios. They're, they're quite, it's a nice part of magic, right? The combat part. And, you know, sometimes, especially when you're playing like highly competitive I guess, you know, even though we're having lots of fun and drinking beer, it's still kind of competitive. You don't see enough combat anymore. So I'm really enjoying these formats where, where combat still kind of rules. And I'm saying this without knowing all that much about the Singleton 7 point format. So if I'm completely wrong, bash me in the comments. Feel free to do that. Talking about that, by the way, please, if you've enjoyed this match as much as I did, please take a moment to leave a like, leave a comment and share it on your socials. All these things are free and YouTube loves it and i love it too but youtube loves it even more so if you comment on this uh you know then it tells youtube that you appreciate the content that i make talking about appreciating the channel you can also become a patron of the show check out patreon.com slash timmy talks for all the information and it already starts with just one dollar and if you become a patron you also get access to the timmy talks uh, discord page and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video what end scroll this end scroll. Ik het dus, ik het dus, somber gezien.